The Pro Act Know How. Hi, this is Pro Sam. Welcome to this episode of Living and Working Abroad. Today, we're going to chat to an overseas expat business uh, founder who's created an online product ideal for the 2020s uh, when people are working remote and the paradigms and the rules of how business uh, manages itself and grows changes. Uh, so I'd like to welcome uh, Michael Walters from Fitzbit360. Um, uh, welcome. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Okay. So the way we're going to do this today is driving it. You interview me as if as if I'm a potential client of yours. All right. All right. All right. Um, you've mentioned 2020, and we all know there's been a lot of uh, move to online, remote working. How 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 do you think you can get more value in your business um, from from this virtual world we now seem to be operating more in, increasingly into. Uh, any business is made up of teams, it's made up of people. Um, the biggest value is to the people and one of the first things that, that we did within our business is realise and recognise that we could remeasure what a day's work was. So a day's work was not turning up nine till five or eight till six. Uh, a day's work was uh, doing uh, a specific measured set of productive activities on that day. And, and if we can do that, then if we can do it in two hours or four hours, you're generating the revenue for the business, the productivity for the business, um, uh, you know, to meet your, your salary and your wage expenses. Excellent. And, and what do you think that, because obviously there is a huge element of consultancy in what you do for your clients, um, so how, how do you believe, what's the best way forward for you to be competitive? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm not a consultant like Michael. Michael is a business consultant and he's got online software that, that provides detailed uh, statistics on a business. Um, now whereas my business, it is different and, and the, it's no two businesses are the same. So we, we are focused on providing practical on practicable solutions for clients to help them move forward, whether that's relocating abroad, uh, relocating back home, setting up a business or operating that uh, and paying the right amount of tax um, and, and making sure the family is covered for in healthcare uh, and, and, and property cover. So it's a different type of consultant, but it's a service provision. So uh, y- your, your business is, is business to business. My, my is very much business to consumer, even if those consumers are our business. And so when you come to me um, to ask me about, about that, that consulting thing, you're carrying out a different job for me. And uh, do I want to increase income? Not necessarily. What I, I also want to cut waste. I also want to control costs. So the, the first thing I think any business should be doing and uh, should do each month is cut costs. Excellent. What would you recommend? <laughs> well, well, I think it then comes back to some of the themes you've already mentioned. How, it's, it's one thing having X number of working hours, but how many, how many of those hours or minutes are actually productive? So it's being able to drill down and understand uh, how employees are actually truly engaging themselves in the business uh, and how much time as they perhaps used to uh, sat around having coffee and just and just chatting it, it, it's important to know and understand the dynamics of of, of productivity and um, whether we're in our home country or we're living and working abroad many people have been in lockdown situations some some countries like ivory coast don't have any restrictions at all uh, for covid um, many European countries do have restrictions and um, you, you can't even go out. It's, it's okay saying, you know, okay, you've got the freedoms, but if you can't go anywhere other than to go and get your weekly shopping, you know, that, that is wearing on the people. So the first thing that we did at Proact after the, um, uh, the, the lockdown was organised for the team to go out socially. So close the office. And just going to sit there and drink coffee, drink water, 
drink wine and, and just relax and, and actually put it into perspective because that, that human element is, is a stress on everybody. Right. And therefore you're saying, in, in a sense, you, you really believe in something that seems to be emerging more, more rapidly, I guess, through, through 2020, which is the idea of, it's not just, are my employees engaged in the work, but I, I'm, I'm concerned and I need to show some concern about their health and well-being too, because they're bombarded by lots of media saying, things are bad, you, you can do this today, but maybe you can't do it tomorrow. And that has, has an impact on their, on their mental acuity. Um, do you, do you see that yourself? Do you think? I, I, I think that um, ill informed news, focusing on one topic repeatedly, incessantly, um, locks people down into a, a narrow range which can cause anxieties and stresses. So, yes, what, what I have done as a business during the lockdown is, is, is learn to understand and appreciate more um, the, the value of the mental health of the staff uh, and, and the team working within the company. So as a small business growing over the years, it, it's about results, results, results. Um, you know, how much have we built? How, how are we doing? Um, but it, every business, every family, uh, every city, every community is made up of people. And that community has got a human value. And you know, and this is where it's beginning to get gather my interest in something like Fitbits 360, where I can get some metrics on human resource issues for for, the, for that team. Right. I, I think the one of the important things that we've built in, and and it's it's about capturing conversations. In a sense, the because of the way the software works. It's, it's anonymous. You don't know which employee submitted which response to which survey. And that's deliberate because you want honest answers. But I think by, by using technology, rather than ask three people or a sample uh, about anything, uh, and therefore maybe getting a skewed view, it's so much easier to ask everybody. And then you're actually getting the real temperature of those conversations that as a business owner, you often don't hear. As a business owner, um, my human resource management is entirely based upon Star Wars. Uh, do or do not, <laughs> reliable or unreliable, it's done, it's not done, success, failure. Uh, but that's not, I've, I've learned my lesson. 2020 has brought this about. I need to move on from Star Wars. And it's also uh, then, moving on from that, you probably have slightly different views of how to get the most out of people rather than just say uh, not doing the job well or doing the job well. There are, there are other things you might need to consider to get people to perform on a consistent level. Possibly. That's from your uh, perspective yes. as a business consulting firm offering business software to online businesses, large and small, whether it's small teams, small businesses or whether it's uh, teams within a business or, or within a larger organization. Uh, I understand that. And what I'm saying is in the past, I had no conception of that. I'm not uh, a Hong Kong, Shanghai bank uh, with, with a massive human resource department and personality tests and the ability to fund weeks of training for staff, uh, you know, to, to, to bring them on track and, and sit and do annual reviews in detail you know small businesses don't have that resource small businesses have um, a generally undercapitalized because the system that we live in um, you know a, the governments um, routinely class small medium-sized businesses as turn over a hundred thousand over a hundred million that's fine that's fine and, and there's many companies that size that you can help um, but in the old days, in your city days, um, nobody below that would ever get any funding. But over the last 20 years, we've seen um, uh, uh, venture capitals coming in and with a 
Bitcoin and online trading and online investment, we can see more and more um, capital becoming available through modern online techniques to support small businesses and help their growth. And I think that, that, that has got to accelerate and help small businesses. If uh, a government can have a hundred businesses uh, employing one new person, that's a hundred jobs. Uh, to ask a big company to employ a hundred people, um, they, the question is, where's my subsidy? Where, where's my investment? Where's my backhander? The, the, and somebody's got to pay for that. Um, small businesses don't have access to capital, but if they get access to technology that provides them with the management data that can actually use to enable them to compete with bigger companies, then that's got to be good. I agree, and that's why we targeted the solution right from the first moments of inception to small and medium-sized businesses because often we felt they weren't best served by, by advice or when advice was available it was very fragmented, difficult to reach. We wanted to put control in the hands of, of the business itself. So it's, it's switching around and it's, as you say, large businesses employ lots of data analysts to crunch data. Small and medium sized businesses don't have that luxury. So we can take care of a lot of those items for them uh, and present it back in a very digestible form uh, using a traffic light. And affordable. And affordable. I mean, obviously, you can go to an American car franchise. Um, how many people would they normally employ, typical American franchise? 50 to 60 yeah. employees. So, so General Motors could be running a franchise of 50, 60 people. That's a small, medium-sized business team in part of a larger conglomerate that might be able to afford it if you can get it through the big company. But if, if you're looking at... Uh, small businesses with, with 10, 20, 30, 40 employees, they can still make that incremental difference. And if your software could bring that advantage to those small players, they can, they can make uh, a giant step in terms of making a big difference to what they do. Absolutely, and that, that kind of leads on to subscription. Um, traditionally, business advice is, is is provided on how many hours am I going to buy at what cost from my advisor, my consultant. Um, but we think the way to go is, is subscription for, for a whole variety of reasons, um, not least of which, of course, is you know how much it's going to cost every month. It costs the same. That's the beauty of the subscription. And yet you still get the value. Um, it, it, and what's your reaction to that? Is that is, it, it's a way of budgeting and it's, it's a way of, of delivering uh, the content. Um, as, as, a, as a small business, if I've got 50 people, I, 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 you know, uh, if I'm working for a big corporate company, the first month, the first two months might be all in-house training sessions. I can't afford to offer that to, to staff. I don't have that capital resources. I have to keep my business development going. Um, to get from 50 uh, to 60 uh, people in an organization is, is a 20% growth in the, in, in the employment and, and far more in the complexity of all those different relationships. So uh, I'm, I'm looking for that um, uh, ways to, to provide the targeted assistance to those people without having to put them on a two year, two week training program where they're not being productive at all. Um, I, I think in, in, in a business, if I'm a, a small medium business, I need 80,000 pounds cash in the bank to bring uh, a new employee on board, uh, to train them up and get them up to a competent, reliable, um, efficient worker. Um, you know, with the cost of the training and the development and what have you, uh, you know, I'd, so I, I, you know, if any way that I can cut that cost down, uh, it's got to be a cost saving and a benefit to me. Well, just just kind of summarising now, I think, I think we've come, come to the end of this, but I think we're both agreeing that we are 
operating and everyone is operating and working in unprecedented times. It, it's very volatile, it's very uncertain. Uh, governmental diktats change from day to day. So how, how do you see or what do you, you see about the importance of, of being flexible what, what and innovating? Uncertain times, is that what you said? Uncertainty, volatile uncertain. and uncertain. Unpredictable. Unpredictable. I don't think we're living in that world at all. I think we're living in a world of opportunity for expat business across borders as well as businesses within uh, countries. There's opportunities and technologies available that have been accelerated, whether they're vaccines, whether it's software, whether it's online conferencing, um, whether it's, it, it's improvements to uh, networking and, 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 and online team, teamwork. I think those opportunities are all there for everybody to grasp and develop, to give people more freedom to have a, a better quality of life and how they do their work. Uh, from what location, uh, you know, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm very happy to employ people in Australia or America or England or Cyprus or Portugal or, or Spain, um, because if I can measure the job that they're doing and and have a mechanism for supporting them and understanding what their needs are, um, all I need to do is fix today's problem and let them work out everything else. Uh, we've all seen with our younger children, um, kids that have grown up with uh, computer games think differently, they're more front, front brain developed, so think quicker, think more directly uh, from that experience to, to an older generation and harnessing those talents, um, giving them an experience, I think is a big opportunity for everybody. I agree. and. One of the interesting facts about the 20th century, I think, if I'm recalling the fact correctly, is that all of the disasters, including the Great Depression, the First World War, Second World War, those technical disasters created more millionaires coming out the other side than any other periods of yep. the 20th century. So The Roaring Thirties after the uh, depression of the uh, stock market collapses of the 20s. So, yeah, I, I agree. So it's about taking advantage of the opportunities. Capitalism is all about um, dying businesses, failed property, failed industries. Um, some industries will, will disappear now. In the UK, we've seen uh, department stores largely disappear. They need to be reinvented, but yes. they've already been reinvented online. It's called Amazon. So <laughs> it's just a different world and it's a different way and we just need to move on uh, with those opportunities. And if a small business can now grasp um, a, te a technological advantage that their big brother business has had um, a year ago, then it enables us to move forward into that space uh, created by the uncertainty. It's always been the case that a small, agile business can outwit a very, very large one because the, the layers of command, the difficulty in getting decisions. When I worked in banking, for instance, just as a quick aside, if I wanted to get a change to underwriting on our mortgage products, I had to go to the country underwriting manager, who then had to go to uh, an international committee, and ultimately it went to the top committee in America. Now you can imagine that process took months whereas of course in the in the mortgage market in the UK particularly in the 80s and 90s it was booming and you needed to respond within days which is in a way why you're not targeting your product at big companies yeah. to make that investment decision the, the opportunity is there now uh, to get it adopted uh, in into businesses now uh, to look after their staff to look after their uh, costs expenses and their productivity in terms of new sales. So, absolutely good stuff. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Go and check out fitbiz360.com um, and see what they've got to offer. And uh, maybe Michael will offer you a free consultation, uh, see how we can help you. Uh, and for more information on uh, living and working abroad for family and business, contact us at productpartnership.com. Thanks very much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. The Proact Know How, brought to you by Proact.